Podcast. We want to thank y'all for coming out and joining us today. And we also want to give a big shout out to Emerald Republic Brewing. So thank y'all for having us. Yes, thank you. So we are actually here from Texas. And just a little bit about us. Uh, every week we do cases from around the U.S. Uh, we try beers from those places, where the crimes occurred, and then we discuss the cases. So, yeah, we're excited to be here. Uh, who all here is on vacation right now for spring break? Yeah? yeah? Any locals? Locals, maybe? Hey, we got mostly locals in the house. All right, cool. Well, welcome. Crank it. Crank it up? Yeah, if you know how to turn it up a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I can barely do it. Oh, okay. We need to get closer to the mics again. Here is loud. All right, we'll, we'll be loud for you guys. Sorry about that. Can everybody hear? So, can everybody hear us? Yep, all yeah. right, cool. So yeah, we're in town from uh, from Dallas, Texas, like we said, and we appreciate you guys coming out. So uh, yeah, today we're gonna try a few of Emerald Republic's beers. Actually, we have a bunch to try. Uh, Carolyn, did you wanna come down and talk to us about some of the beers we're gonna try today? <laughs> there she comes. Uh, if you wanna come, uh, I'll move this for a minute and you can come sit right here with us. Yeah, of course. Got it. You want to squeeze in here? You can yeah. talk talk into that microphone. All right. All right. You just be loud. Just talk in here. Okay. So, <laughs> um, are you guys ready to start sampling and everything? Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. Cool. So, um, you have to come talk right here. the first one, that one right over there, is a, a that one right there is a Hellas Lager. Um, that is Dear World. Um, it's a real light, smooth beer. Um, that's a pretty easy drinking beer for anybody that wants a light beer. I can hear myself, sorry. <laughs> um, so that's what that one is. Um, I have a cherry sour up here for you guys also. The cherry sour is Gozen. That one we're super, super excited and proud of. Our owner and one of our sales reps are actually down in South Florida right now. They have accepted an award for that being the best sour in the state of Florida. So um, that one is really, really exciting. Um, we have Lucas Retrograde. That is a West Coast IPA. Um, that one is just a super typical piney, bitter hop. Long suffering, it stays on. It's a farm beer. Um, couple more light beers up here. Pilsner, a stout, and ten rice. Um, our beer, we find it really special. We use RO water, that is reverse osmosis water, whenever we brew. Um, our brewer, slash owner, he strips the beer, or the water, completely of all of its contents. It's straight H2O. And he adds extra content, sodium, everything, into the water to match it to the region of beer that he's trying to brew. So our beer is really unique in that way. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. So thank you, Carolyn. We appreciate that. So we're going to try a few of these beers. Which one do you want to start with? Which one do you want to start with? Uh, you know me. I'm going to start with the stout. All right. You want to try that? Well, I like stout. I love a stout. Well, I really like it. Yeah. You like, like that one? Yeah. It's, it's smooth. Oh yeah, I like that one a lot. This is a super smooth stout. It's probably one of the smoother stouts that I've had. So yeah, love that. Good job on that one. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really, really good. I love this stout. And that one's called the Spade. 
I think. She got it right here. Yes. Yep, that one's called the spade. So if you like stouts, try the spade. That's a really, really good one. He's going to finish it and not let me have it. I'm not going to finish it. I'm sharing with you. <laughs> so I guess next we'll try the, the takey. Do you need me to do that part? Oh, it's take four. <laughs> I just can't read. That's the problem. So yeah, it's just, so she said that the take four is a German style Pilsner. And it's a 5% ABV, so we're going to try this one. <laughs> try that? Yeah, I like that one a lot, too. That's really good. Tell me what this one is again. That's the German-style Pilsner. Oh, okay. Yep. I think I prefer the stout, but it's very good. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely stout people, but that's super good, yeah. So let's try the cherry sour. So they were saying that the um, they just won an award for that uh, for that cherry sour. So let's try that one. I think it's that one right there. Very good. good. I see why it won the award. Oh yeah, that's it's very cherry. So if you like a lot of cherry flavoring in it, that's a great one to try. So let's finish with this one. We'll take a break. We'll test a few more as we go through. But uh, if I keep drinking like this, I'm gonna be drunk before we get into the case. We don't want that. No, nobody wants to hear me slurring over here. So no. There you go. Oh uh, yeah, we got a couple puppies in the house, yeah. All right, so like we said, today we're going to be talking about the Blue Moon Killer, or the good Blue Moon Murders. They actually occurred here in Pensacola. So we're going to give you all some information about that. So on the morning of July 31st, 2015, the police received a call from a man who was concerned about one of his employees. So he basically told the police that his employee, Richard Smith, had not shown up for work in about three days. And the man was at the house, and he told him, like, I, I, his car's in the driveway, and there's several packages up front, but I, I can't see anything through the windows. The house is locked. So basically, he requested that the police come out and perform a well ch uh, welfare, welfare check on Richard. So a, a deputy was dispatched to the house, and he couldn't see or get into the house either um, but he was able to get on you know the little computers they have in the car and do a search and he found a, a close by family member and so the police reached out to him and they were able to uh, get in touch with Richard's half brother uh, his name was Donald Hart uh, Hartung and after speaking to the police Donald did come to the house and gave them permission to enter the premises uh, now, living in the home was Richard Smith, who was 47, John Smith, who was 49, and Donald's half-brother, uh, I'm sorry, so John was Donald's half-brother, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so Richard and John were both Donald's half-brothers. So. A lot of the common names. Yeah, yeah. You a know. lot of common yeah. names. See, the beer's already getting me, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, as well, there was also Von Seal Smith. Uh, okay, that that one's was not common. Yeah, so that was all of their mothers. So, Donald, Richard, and John, that was all their moms. So, she lived in the house as well. So, when the police entered the home, they noticed these strange mounds of clothes and blankets on the floor and on the couch in the living room. Uh, I mean, you might say maybe they're hoarders, maybe they're just messy people. We have mounds of clothes on our couch. Yeah, sometimes we do have mounds of clothes on our couch, for sure. Um, <laughs> it's all those kids. Yeah. Uh, sadly, uh, it wasn't just messy or anything like that. Barely sticking out of one of the sides of the piles on the living room floor, you could actually see a shoe and a pant leg. And it's not like just thrown there. Like you could see that it obviously had, had a like leg in it? it had a leg in okay. it. Yeah, like there was a person in there. So, um, and I'm assuming the person wasn't just hiding under the clothes. 
No, not just hiding under the clothes. They, uh, yeah, they were dead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can always hope for that, but no, not so much. So, so yeah, this led them to believe that obviously there was probably a body under the pile of clothes on the couch too. Uh, eventually, they made their way back into one of the bedrooms and they found another pile of clothes uh, and blankets. So the detectives and the MEs were called to the house. Uh, the piles were removed uh, from the bodies. And if they didn't already know at this point, yeah, they knew they had a murder scene and so they, they had a son investigating. They found two bodies at this point? Uh, so there were three piles of clothes. There's one on the uh, on the floor of the living room. There's one on the couch and then of the living room as well. And then one in the back bedroom. Okay, I missed that they found the person and one on the floor. Yeah, Got it. yeah. So every pile had a had a body. Mm. So they found John Smith sitting on the couch. He had several blunt force injuries to his head and his throat had been slit. Uh, laying on the floor was Richard Smith. He had similar injuries, but he also had been shot in the back of the head. Oh. And in the bedroom, they found Von Seal Smith. Now you gotta remember, this is an older lady, right? Yeah. So this is the mama, is the mama yeah. Um, so <laughs> she also had blunt force uh, injuries to her head. Her throat had been slit, and she was also missing the tip of her pinky finger. So, you know, about like that much of her finger. So, figure first digit. Interesting. Um, yeah. Um, but just her. The other ones had their pinky fingers. Everybody else had all their fingers. Yeah, exactly. Now, she did have a few other injuries to her hands, so they thought maybe it was part of, like, fighting off the attacker. They thought it could be defensive wounds, but at this point, they weren't really sure. Okay. So as police are processing the scene, they noticed that Richard's belt had been pulled out. So they found him laying face down on the ground and it looked as though it was kind of humped up in the back. So you could see it looked like somebody grabbed his belt and tried to like move the body. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, when, they, when they searched the kitchen trash, they also found a purse. Uh, they also found a bloody paper towel, and they noticed that there was a cigarette butt on top of a bloody paper towel. So, like, it was kind of, like, pretty dense with blood, and the, the, the cigarette butt was in it. So, obviously, whoever cleaned up and stuck it in there. Sounds like there's lots of DNA there. You would think so, yeah. Uh, they also found a bloody hammer on the kitchen counter. So, yeah, I mean, they've got a murder weapon kind of sitting right there on the counter. Um... But they could tell that the house was not broken into, and nothing had been stolen, at least from, you know, what looking could, around, from what they could tell, there was nothing stolen, exactly. So they don't have a motive at this point? No, they have nothing. They just have a bunch of bodies, and they're starting to collect evidence, but yeah, they've got nothing. So the police naturally interviewed uh, Donald Hartung, and he told them that he'd been um, with his family about three days earlier, He'd gone over and cooked the dinner for his mom and John. Uh, Richard was actually still at work while he was over there. Um, so he actually fixed him a plate and stuck it in the oven. And then he took off yeah, around. That was nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's his brother, you know, right? So he stuck the plate, uh, plate of food in the oven for him. And then around 6 p.m. in the evening, he took off and headed back to his house. So Donald was very cooperative. He even agreed to give uh, the police his DNA uh, sample so they could rule him out. Okay. So now the police have to try and figure out, like, who could have killed this family and, and why, right? Like, why would you just walk in and murder three people in a family for no reason? And cover them in laundry. Yeah, yeah, the laundry thing was a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. So John... Uh, the, the brother John actually had special needs. He worked uh, at the local Walmart, but he was very well liked. They said he was a hard worker. Everybody had good things to say about him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Von Seal was described as very social. Everybody who knew her loved her. She was just one of those bubbly, outgoing people. Yeah. Um, so it was a nice family. 
yeah, they're they're a good family and everybody likes them. Um, unfortunately, as Von Seal got older, she became became unable to walk. Aww. So now, because her husband has passed, Richard is now the caretaker for both Von Seal and his brother because his brother does have special needs. Oh, okay. Okay. But um, his cousin actually, uh, in an interview, was saying he never complained about taking care of his family. He was always on top of it. So I mean, we're talking about a good family that was very loved. So you know, they're trying to piece together why these people were killed. Uh, now, one thing that they did find during the investigation is that Richard actually worked for the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, he worked in, in IT there. And he had a very high level uh, of security clearance. So, yeah, so the Texas considered that he may have been targeted because of work he was doing on the job. That would make sense. Yeah, and I mean, especially because of his high security clearance, they, was, they were concerned that maybe, you know, I mean, people who do that kind of thing, they will sometimes be involved in uh, international crimes, domestic crimes, even in researching terrorists or... Um, Hackers, things like that. So, you would bring up the hackers. I would bring up the hackers, yeah. yeah. You would bring up the hackers. <laughs> yeah, so obviously they're concerned about this. So they went ahead and they actually turned his laptop and his cell phone over to uh, the Department of Homeland Security because obviously it's, it's their equipment. Right. They're going to be better able to analyze it, see if it's been uh, accessed by anybody. Um, and see, see if, if anything, he was the target. See if he was the target, or see if anything that happened wasn't supposed to happen. All right. So let's try one real quick. My mouth's getting dry. Which one are we trying? What's that called? Ten rates. Ten rates. Tell us a little bit about it. She's got to find it. Yeah, I got to find it on here. Oh, there it is. New England IPA. Oh, that's good. I like 6. that. 6.1 ABV um, Galaxy and Citra Hops. So you're not usually a really big IPA I'm drinker, not. but I think you're going to like that. That one's super smooth. It's not too hoppy? It's not overly hot, but it's, it's really smooth, yeah. Okay, I don't you know look if scared. I should, well, I don't know if I should trust you. Uh, you trust me or don't trust me. You give me your opinion. What do you think? She went back for another another sip, so I think she likes it. That was my first sip. No, that was your first one? No, it's very good. It's not really helpful. You know, like it? It's yeah. pretty smooth, right? Yeah, I like that one a lot. So, while they're trying to piece this all together, one of the, one of the detectives was trying to figure out why someone would pile clothes on all, on all these bodies, like, because they were mounds that were, you know, yay high, so... They just didn't understand. So, you know, of course, when you don't know something, what it do you do? Something. What are you going to do? Oh. If you don't know something, where are you going to go? Google? Google. Oh. According to my children, <laughs> Google knows everything. No, no. Apparently, I don't that know was anything. That's me that said that. Was it? Oh, it was you. That was okay. Me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure the kids think so, too. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, this detective gets on Google, and when he did, he came across some information that this practice is sometimes done in occult rituals. Covering bodies in laundry. I know, it sounds weird, right? So piling yeah. all of these clothes and blankets on the bodies actually helps insulate them and keep them warm. So oh. if like something or someone is killed and they want to keep the body warm for a period of time, so then throw off the time of death. Yeah, or so like that. exactly. Yeah. Or if they need to keep it, it fresh sense. for later. Yeah. So they'll do that, they'll pile clothes on. i later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm a bad person, I apologize. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, he Googles and he finds this information. Um, they also found that around the same time of the murders, there was a blue moon. Uh, does anybody know what a blue moon is? No? Yes? No? Maybe? Okay. Beer. So, according to... It is a beer, huh? yeah. It, it is a beer, that is correct. Good answer, yeah. Uh, so, according to the Oxford Dictionary... Uh, oh, ooh. pulled out your accent there, uh, huh? A blue moon is it's the, a second full moon in a calendar month. So, if you've got a long month and you wind up having two full moons within that month, the second moon, uh, full moon is considered a blue moon. 
It's also a song. It's a song too? I think so. Blue Moon? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. She knows. <laughs> She's like Google. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I won't sing it for y'all because I probably don't know it. Come on, sing it. You can do it. No, no. no you don't you have sing to it. You have to listen regularly to hear me sing. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Because it does happen. I, I've done it a few. I'm guilty there as well. I have yeah. not, um, I've not had enough beer yet to sing for you guys. Very true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> we might scare you off. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so blue moons are kind of a big deal because they only happen like every two to three years. Uh, and because, oh, and they can also be important in occult rituals. Um, and I'm going to say allegedly here because this is what they said. I didn't bother to spend the time to look it up. So, uh, but yeah. So that's when the police are, yeah. So that's what the police thought. So apparently the blue moon was set to happen a few days after the murder. So now the police are starting to connect the dots. They're thinking maybe the family was murdered for the ritual and that they covered the bodies to keep them warm until the blue, blue moon. moon. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So, yeah. so that's kind of what they're thinking at this point. And they think it enough that they actually wind up holding a press conference. What? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah press conference they had all the, the, the media come sure. in you yeah, well especially with the um uh the, the homeland security thing like that's oh, a viable yeah, option too that right already. yeah uh but no they went ahead and, and they held a pro, uh, press conference and they released a statement that said the mur uh, the method of murder the position of the bodies led us to believe that it was a ritualistic killing and they they even insinuated that it was witchcraft specifically I mean, thanks, Google. Yeah, and I heard the term Wicca thrown around a lot. From what I, from what I understand, Wicca is pretty like pretty more naturey, yeah. yeah, not um, yeah, not murdery. I, I don't know. <laughs> but again, allegedly, I'm, I'm not an expert. I, I don't know. So, uh, didn't so like that not murdery. Not murdery. That's good, that's good yeah. right? Yeah. So anyway, the, the press eats this up and. Of course. Of course, they, yeah. Witchcraft they murder? Ratings. Yeah, witchcraft murder, for sure. And so the media dubs the crimes the Blue Moon Killings, and it quickly became international news. International? Oh, international. Yeah, I think it was like, I think they showed like Australian. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was international. Okay. All right, let's try another one. I'm ready. Oh, you just want me to pick one? Just do that one. Yeah. What's it called? Oh. Uh, Long suffering. I think that's what it says. Long suffering. Does that say long suffering? Yes, that's okay, right. long okay. suffering. <laughs> and what? I don't. Oh, the gift of the long gift of long suffering. It's a long name for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it on the list. What kind of beer is it? It's right here, baby. Oh, did I miss it? You missed it. I'm blind. It's a, it's a citrus saison. It's a citrus saison. It's called the gift of long suffering because it took us two years to perfect that recipe. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Did okay. Did hear that? So, okay, so for those of y'all who couldn't hear, it's called the gift of long suffering because it took them two years to perfect the, the recipe. recipe for this beer, so... We got it down now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, it, so, wait, if I don't like it, I should pretend like I do, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. I hope you like it. Citrusy pepper on the back end. Oh, it's very good. It's very, very good. It was worth the suffering. <laughs> worth the suffering. Oh, yeah. yeah so, I, and I get a little bit of that pepper in there. It's, yeah, that's for really sure. Good, it's actually. very good. Yeah, yeah worth the two the years. Yeah, yeah, worth <laughs> the two years. That's good. Let's hold that one. You're gonna hold that one? You like that one? I do like that, that one. Is that a favorite so far? That missed out so far. Yeah, and it does have a, it and it has a legit name. It does. Yep. So, when the autopsy, uh, obviously I can't talk. <laughs> so, when the autopsy came back, unfortunately, they couldn't get a time of death. And obviously it's because, because, the, the, because the laundry was on top. Yeah. And so it had affected the decomposition rate of all the bodies. So 
the only uh, the only thing that helped the, with the time of death was Richard's stomach. So remember, he made dinner. Donald, his brother, had dinner, gone over yeah. and made dinner. So the stomach contents of his uh, his mother and his brother both had the food that he had prepared for them. But Richard didn't because he wasn't there. Exactly. Uh -huh. So. He didn't have an opportunity to eat the food. I was to say, so he didn't eat the plate the brother set aside for him. No, he didn't. Um, and yes, uh, if anybody is curious, the food was actually in the oven. Like, they checked. There was so still food three days food. later sitting in the oven, yeah. I, I don't know if they left <laughs> it on warm or not. I have no idea. You wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, also to help pinpoint the time of death was a security video. So, remember he works for the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, they actually turned over a video of Richard leaving work uh, on the last day that he was there. So they, okay, so we can pinpoint sometime. Yeah. Well, and so in the video, you can actually see him leaving in the exact same clothes that he's found on the floor dead wearing. Okay. So we know he was murdered pretty much that night. And or he that, slept in his clothes. I mean, he could have slept in his clothes. I'm, I'm assuming not, but we, <laughs> anything's possible. You always have to throw a wrench in there, right? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> true, true. You do it to me all the time. Oh, for, especially the more I drink. <laughs> then you get interrupted a lot. Yes, I do. <laughs> So on top of that, the last phone call that he made was at 6.46, um, according to his phone records. Uh, he actually made it to the house. So he was calling his mom or his brother, and nobody yeah. answered. Oh, um, that's interesting. Yep. The police actually calculated his arrival time home from work that, that day, and it would have been right around 7 p.m., um, so basically now they've got a much better understanding, or at least they think, unless Amy pipes in, that they think they've got a pretty good idea right. about what time he was murdered. So He's saying you slept in your clothes. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. I've done it many times. So remember that the police turned over Richard's phone and laptop to the Department of Homeland Security? Yes. Yeah? I do okay. remember that. I'm, gonna, I'm bound and determined to hit my face with this microphone. You're doing a great job. Uh, <laughs> so when they finished analyzing them, they found that none of the computers or anything had been a uh, accessed by anybody other than Richard. Nothing. There was nothing out of the ordinary. So, so probably not tied to him. Well, and they actually pretty much flat out told the police that it, it, there was nothing that he was working on that would have tar made somebody want to target him to for murder, right? So the police decide to conduct a second interview with Donald Hartung to see, and that's the brother, uh, to the see cook. the cook, yeah, yeah. Uh, to see if they can find out more information uh, about the family. Now, when they conducted the interview with Donald Hartung, conversationally it just happened to come up that he was a practicing member of the Wicca religion. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So. I don't know if he hadn't been watching the news or he just assumed it wasn't a big deal, but you'd think, like, even if he had, maybe that's not something you want to bring up if in an interview with the police. Yeah. It up, you, yeah. You'd think so. But apparently he was like, whatever. So the police used this information to get a search warrant of his home. Uh, they did search the home. They didn't find any evidence that suggested that he had murdered his family, but they did find one room of his house that they considered to be interesting. And basically, it had books on witchcraft, it had a Ouija board, it had some miniature figurines, like some of them were Egyptian gods, some other ones. Oh, uh, we're in trouble if that makes you suspicious. You I, have have, little, I have a little Buddha thing on my desk, I yeah, mean, who knows? I, I, I've had a Ouija board Am before. I going to get locked out of the bedroom? Is that <laughs> Why would I lock you up? Oh, okay, I don't know. That's okay. We would be in trouble. Oh, we would be in trouble. Okay, all right, cool. All right, all right. I'm on board now. I okay, got, you. got it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, one of one of the people referred to it as a prayer room. I, I honestly don't know why they were surprised because he told them flat out he was a practicing member of, of Wicca, right? So right. To find it, I don't, I don't know why they were surprised, but well, it just adds to their 
suspicion that it's a witchcraft murder. Mm -hmm. Now here's this guy super involved in the case. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I get it. And, well, and at this point, they're running out of suspects. Like, the Homeland Security thing isn't working out. They don't have anywhere else to turn. The, the only good lead they have is the brother who practices Wicca, so obviously they're going to they're gonna focus on it. You, usually you say the husband always does it, but the husband's not there. Well, Von Seal's husband was dead, right. so he couldn't so do it. Couldn't that would be weird. It. That'd be awkward. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be awkward. honest. <laughs> it would. <laughs> so, like I said, there's no re lead, so they're going to focus on Donald. Do you want any more of this before I finish it? Uh, I'll let you finish okay. that one. I'm going to try check. the other one here in just a second. So, like I said, they looked into him further. Uh, they interviewed people who knew Donald, and they did actually start to see a different picture of Donald. Donald told the police that he was very close to his family in the first interview. Yes. But Donald's cousin, Faye Haas, actually had a very, very, very different story to tell. Okay. So she described him as a bully who had tendencies to be jealous of other people. And although he had no criminal record when the police looked into him, um, no. they said that he was always getting into some sort of trouble. I, it obviously wasn't like criminal trouble, but he was he was kind of the black sheep of the family, right? He was the one oh, who like was you. always screwing up. I am good. Sometimes, yeah, yeah sometimes. You are. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and apparently his parents had bailed him out financially enough and he had screwed up enough times that his mother and father had actually cut him out of the will completely. Oh. Yeah. And now all of a sudden we have a murder. He's yeah. looking yeah. suspicious. Yeah, a little bit. Now. <laughs> yeah, he's looking suspicious. <laughs> looking very sus, yeah. So, yeah, he's cut out of the will, and his mom even, you know, like, like, Faye basically said, like, he knew, she told him, it's not like it was a secret, she told him flat out, like, your brothers get everything, you don't get shit. No. So, that's pretty much motive right there in and of itself. See, my mom's telling me I'm getting all the shit. Like, even the shit I don't want. That's a lot of shit. <laughs> you seen her pour me through the house. <laughs> a couple times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, during the investigation, it also came to be known that... Um, the mother and father, so Vaughn Seal and her husband, were actually very, very well off... Um, Collectively, their assets between their bank accounts and everything were over a million dollars. So, this is no small sum of money that he's being cut out of. Okay. Here, right? So. I don't know. I'd probably be mad if I was cut out of that money. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. And so, I haven't actually mentioned it up until this point, but Donald is actually 63 years old at this point time. Right? So okay. he's actually been talking for a few years, like how he's going to retire, like he's ready to retire. He's very excited about it. And suddenly this investigation is going on and he just up and quits his job. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Make yourself look a little bit more guilty, please. Yeah. So he quits his job and obviously it looks sus. So now the police are looking at him even more. Um, let's try this beer right here. Last one. We have to take beer breaks. Which one is this one? I'm not going to say that right. Lu Lupulus? Lupulus, retro Lupulus Retrograde. It's a West Coast <laughs> IPA. It's a 6% ABV. Let me try that. You, you, you let me do it first? You, do. It's the IPA. Okay. you know you like them better. I do like IPAs. IPAs so. Uh, that's your favorite? Okay. Because the other one was really good. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what I that actually, is. I love that. What kind of hops are in that? Ah, okay. <laughs> and I, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. It probably will not be my favorite if it's bitter. <laughs> it's, it, you know what's funny? is it's, it's really smooth on the front end. It's bitter on the back end. Yes. Yeah, so it's smooth going down, and then it hits you with a little bitter on the back. You can get it's, it on the back of your tongue. It's good. It's really good. Oh, I, I love good. it. You, you've heard of the podcast. She, she's not a huge fan of it. I no, love it. I think it's good. I like the other one a lot, though. The, 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 the two other year IPA. one. The, the two year one. Uh, that was the Saison. No, but the other. I love yeah. the Saison, but we tried another IPA, didn't we? 
Oh, we did. We did. Yeah, I really liked that one. Yeah. Ted Ranks. Yeah. That one. Yeah. That's that's the one. one. That, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
It's a, it's a I'm thing. telling you, yeah. he knows way too much about what happens in prison. For never I'm having scared. been to prison, I, I guess I watched too many documentaries. But yeah, for never <laughs> being in prison, I know a little too much. Yeah. So, well, anyway. He says he's never been in prison. I mean, maybe I changed my name. Who knows? It's possible. It happens. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, the police go and they pick him up. Okay, right. so now we're getting ready for the trial. So they get the letter, and basically in the letter, uh, oh, basically he said that he had basically expressed some uh, interest in Wicca to Donald, and because of that, Donald kind of started opening up to him and talking to him, and he kind of started giving some information, but the, the police didn't know how much they could trust them, because obviously these jailhouse snitch guys, they may just want to be getting a, a deal for themselves, get some time right. off their sentence, but obviously they have to investigate it, right? So they go and they talk to him, um, and basically this guy says that Donald told him that the murders had nothing uh, to do with witchcraft or anything like that. Um, Money. Well, I'm sorry, let me, let me back that up. He said that the piles of clothes that he put on top of them oh. had nothing to do with witchcraft at all. What was he just trying to hide the fact that he committed three murders? It was exactly what you said. He he understood that if you put the, oh, the piles of clothes on there, so he was trying to hide the actual time of death to okay. throw the police off. So he piled clothes so on. Somebody would have an alibi and blah, blah, blah. Exactly, because yeah. he's like, oh, I'm a loving brother who, whatever. So, so he said that. The other thing that he said that piqued their interest is that, and you remember Von Seal was missing that piece of her pinky finger? He said oh, yeah. that it had nothing to do with witchcraft. It wasn't a defensive wound. He said he actually had to torture his mother so that he could get the combination to a safe that they had hidden in the floor of the bedroom. And, uh, so he cut her part of dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep, and so, yeah, so, and the, the police are like, wait a second, we don't know anything about a safe, we didn't find a safe, so now they gotta go and try to locate the safe. So they do go to the house, they find the safe, they didn't know anything about it, how's this one guy in jail gonna know anything about it? So now they're feeling like, okay, so we got... Have... like, search the... you said it was in the basement? No, it's, it was in the bedroom closet. Oh, there's probably not basements here. I think they have like a little piece of carpet there. We don't there. have them either. No, we don't have basements. Oh yeah, yeah you guys yeah. for sure. Yeah. I don't know why I heard basement. I just safe yeah. basement. I don't know. <laughs> True. So we'll go with that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So no, they actually had had a, an in floor safe installed, and it was kind of in this corner of their bedroom closet, and it had a combination and all that, and I think it was like covered up. So they went back, they found the safe, and now they kind of were thinking, okay, we have a credible witness to what else. he's saying, right? Yep, yep. Sorry, getting a little off here. I got I got chatting like this, and then I get off my nose. So, <laughs> so you yeah. usually can edit all that out. Yeah, it's hard when you're doing. This is actually our first live event, so we want to thank all of you guys for <laughs> yeah, joining us. We normally live. edit the crap out of these things. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so yeah, so now it's pretty obvious that the Blue Moon killings that were shaking the world at this time were really about money. It's nothing to do with the uh, the occult. Makes it a lot, much less interesting story. So, yeah. yeah, a way less interesting story. I actually, so when we were researching this, you were like, occult murder, and I was like, yes. Let's that do the occult murder. That is not what I said. Okay, that's, that's what I heard. Liar. Okay, that may not be what you said, but that's what I heard. Because I was like, occult murder, yes. No, because they, the brewery suggested this case. True, yeah, and thank you for the suggestion. The title was, Was It an Occult Murder? Ah. And all I did was send you the article and let you research it. Wow, it sounded occult to me. I was like, yeah, we're doing that one. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, it wasn't until January 21st of 2020. So this happened in 2015, so two years ago. Uh, that this thing even went to trial. And they made it right before COVID. Though. Right before COVID. Slid it, Slid it right in before everything shut down. <laughs> so on January 29th of 2020, 
uh, eight days. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So he goes to trial on the 21st. On the 29th, which is only eight days later, he is found guilty on all counts uh, uh, of murder. So first degree murder. I think they lumped it all together for three. Uh, but the jury only deliberated for like four hours. Oh wow! And came back with the guilty verdict. So well, they had his DNA. Yeah, they had the DNA. I mean, the murderer's weapon was at the scene. Yeah, that was kind of dumb. Plus, people don't generally like it when you torture the mamas. I mean, that's true. That's, that yeah. always looks bad, you know. So, um, so yeah, uh, there was, and it was funny. You know, I watched the when they read the verdict, and his face didn't change at all. He had no emotion whatsoever. He just stood there, stone cold, like whatever. Okay, fine. What sentence did they give him? So they gave him uh, life in prison. Oh. I, do y'all have the death penalty in yes, Florida? I thought you did. We do it yes. in Texas. So yeah. Yeah. In yes, Texas, if you do. kill somebody, we will kill you back. Yeah. That's how we do it in Texas. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are the same. So, yeah. Um, but no, he got life in prison. And I'm imagining it was probably because of his age. They were like, oh, that's that, that, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he gets sentenced. He receives life in prison. He's actually housed at the Graceville Correctional Facility, which is two to two and a half hours, depending on which route you take per Google, who knows everything, <laughs> from this brewery. So if you want to go visit him, he's just trying to throw two out. You got this. So that He told me no, so. I did tell you no. Well, we have to take kids to the beach. If we don't, we're hey, going to get in trouble. the grandparents, they're at the beach right now. The grandparents have them at the beach. True. Thank you, Grandpa and Bam Bam. We appreciate you guys. See? Yeah, we can go after that. See? We'll just have them watch them a little bit longer. Go visit them. Yeah. So, uh, did we want to do the, the second flight and check out a few more beers? Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. But that being said, that is the case of the Blue Moon Killings. I want to thank all of you guys so much for joining us. We're going to try a few more beers. We do have a food truck outside. Uh, they are doing the Killer Brunch. I'm sure some of you, if you were interested, have probably already got food. Uh, additionally, uh, you can check us out at bloodandbarrels.com, or you can listen to any of our episodes on Spotify, uh, Apple, what, Podcast. Apple Podcast, any, any. pretty much any of yeah. the podcasts if you're Facebook interested. Now. I stutter a lot less because I have the power of editing. It's wonderful. <laughs> I think we cuss a lot more though. We did not cuss like we usually. We do. didn't. We didn't. I was trying to be nice, you know. We got welcome. a few kids in here. I was trying to be good. Yeah, usually we cuss a lot. So yeah. <laughs> we tried to tone that down. Usually I'm a lot drunker by the end of it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, usually Amy's uh, good and lit. <laughs> <laughs> She, she goes, she'll get there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's quite possible, yes. So, uh, while we're waiting for the next round of beers, does anybody have any good suggestions for cases that we could do? That's from your town, hometowns, if you're in the area, or anything like that? Ted Bundy, yeah. So, Ted Bundy was picked up yeah. here, and they actually suggested that we do Ted Bundy, but I was sitting there going, the Bundy... It, it's yeah. overdone, and then on top of that, it, I was like, I don't think we can cover Ted Bundy so in like big. a sitting. Yeah, it's it's a big case. I think we'd be here all day. You guys would be tired of us. We'd leave. You know, so. The sticks pool hall. Okay, is that is it's nearby? Yes, it's over off Highway 29. That's where it was. Highway 29. What happened? I'm gonna repeat it for you guys who can't hear. Ladies. Uh, one of them had about a hundred grand. She asked her friend to hold it. Yep. The one that was doing the holding, uh, the other one ended up dead. Oh. Okay. But so, it's a lot of twists and turns. Oh. So it's a twist okay. and turns. We like that. We like that. And that actually brings up so I'll I'll tell him uh, tell y'all. So he said, right up the road, there was a murder at a pool hall. One lady asked another our friend to hold like a hundred grand for her, and that lady wound up getting murdered. And he said it's pretty twisty, so we'll have to check that out. Billy Boy X. Billy Boy what? Billy Boy X. I actually found her up here on this road. Is that the same level? I think it is Boy X. Billy Boy X? Yeah. Billy Boy yeah. Billy Boy yeah. Okay. Oh. Another one to check out. She said it's a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have a consensus here. All right. <laughs> the King Brothers. I, I want to give a... Uh, oh, who is that? The King Brothers. Yeah, the King Brothers. Okay, that's a good one. Oh, see, I feel like we should be, like, taking notes well, we're, 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 we're on Facebook Live right now, so we've got it there. We can hear it. If you like the culty stuff, too. Oh, yeah, for sure. Farms near Milton is a place to go. 
place where a lot of fields in Florida, which is just 40 minutes from here, yep. um, there's a lot of satanic talk of that whole area. It's called American Farms. American Farms, yeah. you got some satanic talk. Yeah. It's about 45 minutes from here. There's whole websites devoted to it. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'll we'll check that out. Oh, no, we oh, did make the Facebook Live work. It is working. Yeah. The Sticks Pool Hall, they found her in Milton. Yeah. Maybe it's connected. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. Man. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. I've got some good you games. We'll have to check them out. <laughs> well, we, crazy. We, did, we actually did one of our Patreon cases was um, Florida Man. It's not out yeah. yet, but... So we, have, so we actually have... So we're doing today's case. We're going to have to... We had, obviously... I, hopefully, y'all got a good laugh at us with our technical difficulties oh. when we were setting up. But uh, we got, uh, so we did today's case. We're going to try to get this posted out on, uh, on as a regular episode. We'll just have to yank it off of Facebook Live. Yes, because <laughs> our stuff wasn't working. Yep. But and we've already got, we got three a couple Florida, Florida cases. Like three more. Yeah, and then we've got several coming out. We've got a couple Patreon mm -hmm. ones. We've got Fort Pierce, uh, Isla Morada, and St. Petersburg. Yep, yep. So we have <laughs> lots, of, uh, lots of cases coming. Wait, are y'all talking about a good one over here? Yeah, it's yeah. it's called uh, the Bill Billings murder. The Bill I've heard. I feel like I've heard of that. There was a show, it was in Beulah, which is probably mm -hmm. forty-five minutes. That was, they had like special news kids. So they adopted. Oh wow! Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. everybody in the house. Okay, so. So for those of you uh, uh, who are watching us live, so that's the Billings murder. It was uh, some adopted children, and they were all killed execution style. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. We'll have to check that one out as well, for sure. All right. So do we have descriptions for all these on here? All right. That was good. That was a good review. Yeah, we, we were driving. I was like, don't burp in the mic. Okay. So. <laughs> I, mean, I, I made it. I made it all the way to the case, y'all, without doing it. So. Yeah. We normally have to edit those out. So anyway, uh, so this one's called Ineffable. I got it right. First time. Look at that. <laughs> so this is a Black Rye IPA. The ABV is 8%. And it's brewed with chocolate rye malt and hopped with armadillo hops. Okay, so I might like this IPA. Okay. So it's kind I don't of think a, I've ever had a black IPA. Yeah, so she said it's kind of a, a mix between a stout and an IPA. So it's it's hoppy, but it's a darker. Uh, it's like a darker beer. What? Say what kind of IPA it was again? Uh, it was the black. Uh, the black rye IPA. Black rye IPA. Yep, black rye IPA. Oh yeah, I like that one. That's really good. Oh yeah, that's a winner for sure. <laughs> we both like darker beers, so yeah, for sure, that's awesome. So, so, yeah, thanks. So yep. you can have the next one. So here's where we're gonna get here's where we're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try the Genesis, which is a New England IPA. It's a five point eight. ABV and it's brewed with uh, Citra and Zebra, <laughs> BRU, one, hops, bruh, bruh. I, I'm, too, I'm, too, I'm too used to my kids walking up to me and go, what's up, bruh? Bruh. I'm like, I can't even pronounce it anymore. So, yeah. So, wait, how's it supposed to really be pronounced? Brew. Brew? Okay, brew, not oh, bruh. Yeah. Okay. Bruh would have an A, babe. Uh, bruh. Well, it, used uh. to, it used to be bruh. Uh, uh, I guess it's bruh. I don't know. Uh, I'm about to be double fisting it. You are. You're going to have to catch up. Yeah, you have to drive. You have to drive. I like this one better. You can have that one. Okay, I'll drink that one. <laughs> 
So anyway, we do want to thank all you guys for joining us. We'll probably stay around and try a few more beers. We're going to log off of uh, Facebook Live. But again, thank you guys. You can check us out anywhere. Um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We have a website, bloodandbarrels.com. And is that it? I don't know. You're the one doing the case. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Y'all take care. We'll catch you next time. Oh, wait. Do I have to do the thing? Sure. Do the thing. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you what we're trying over here. I made it almost all the way through without broken out loud. I'm going to pee.